Amen. Okay. Um, um, well, today is a Father's Day. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to share something you know, about uh, the Father, okay? And then I put the, my Father's business, okay? You could see in this uh, photo, there's my dad. Uh, and then uh, it's me and my kids, okay? So it's a kind of three generation kind of stuff, okay? So this is my dad. You will see him uh, in September. The end of September, he's gonna come visit me. So you will, you will see you know, him around. And it's, it's kind of funny because most of the time when you grow up and you're a kind of teenager or anything like that, you don't wanna be like your dad, okay? You don't know, no, I don't wanna be like him, okay? Because you could see things that maybe, oh, I don't wanna be like. But as soon as you get older, <laughs> you'll be more like that person, okay? I, I, I wanna do a few stuff, I wanna share a little you know, few stuff, but uh, there's, a, there's the person or father or, or um, uh, authority figure, okay? Um, normally, we kinda have a few things like, like that, okay? A few stuff, you know, when I kinda turn the lights in the house, okay? Then I say, oh, I look like my dad, okay? Like, a, what do you think? You know, this is a circus or something, okay? This is kind of the few things that you, without thinking, you're kind of doing, you know, the same like your dad. And this is a, a few stuff that also we want to be as our Heavenly Father, okay? So um, um, today I want to start, you know, uh, uh, talking about uh, what is happening, you know, with Jesus when he was the age of 12, okay? So maybe you kind of know about it. But uh, in general, when we um, um, do business, okay? So let's say in my father's business. When there is a business, you know, thing, uh, I don't know what you're doing for a living. Well, I know most of you are doing for a living. Um, but then, yeah, when there's a business thing that they always recommend that you uh, uh, spend less than you that you earn, okay? That's kind of, you know, for the business uh, school, the purpose is uh, to make a profit, okay? But there's also, you know, in this other service, like the teachers is more uh, uh, going, you know, to educate the children, okay? Uh, the salesmen, you know, they say more, they must sell the products, you know, to make a living, okay? Farmer, electrician, the, so we know exactly what the business is, okay? You've been doing this for years, you know, what is, what is that for? So, uh, the thing that I want to, you know, bring it back is, is like a, when we're trying to do our business and then when we're trying to do our heavenly father's business. My dad is, uh, was, well, was a mechanic, not anymore, but was a mechanic. When I grew up, uh, his workshop was in my house. So I could not leave, you know, the house unless I passed through the workshop, okay, my dad. Okay, we don't have like a garage, a bar, no. Our, our main entrance was the workshop, okay? So we passed around all the tools and all the cars, you know, lifted and all that kind of stuff. That was my life. So since I was a kid, I remember helping him or, or thinking that I helped, okay? <laughs> because you never know. So then he asked me also, you know, for uh, the tools or, and then I go and bring them. And then when they're uh, finished uh, with, the, with the car, I watch all the tools, those ones who you can and the gasoline, and then put it back. So I remember those times, you know, when I helped him. And little by little, you learn, little by little, you know, then I learned how to do two knobs, and then, uh, you know, change the uh, uh, spark plugs or the carburetor, all this kind of stuff. I, I remember those times. And then I would think, oh, that's okay. The thing that I don't like is it's always when I watch the, the uh, uh, car parts in gasoline, the, uh, the, the, my, my hands, you know, kind of like a burn. Like, ah, I don't like that. And always smell gasoline. <laughs> you always smell gasoline. It doesn't matter how, how mad you trying to use cream or something, you always smell the gasoline. And, and this is, I re that was my childhood. That was my childhood. I remember always have two pair of uh, uh, jeans, one for work and one for going to the, to the, to the store. Okay, when my dad said, okay, go to the store. So then I go, okay, the, I need to go and chase. Why do you take so long? Well, because I go and change. I don't want to be so greasy, okay? How about the, a girl, you know, see in the, in the, when I go for the, so I need to be okay. So I will change. I was taking too much time for that. So anyway, so when I was helping him, I say, I don't want to be mechanic. I don't want to be mechanic. I want to be industrial engineer, okay? And I want to pay 
somebody to fix my car. I want to have enough money to, to, to pay somebody you know, to fix my car, so I don't need to deal with that. My pride was really high, okay? Then I become a missionary. <laughs> and then I say, why I didn't learn it better, okay? Why I didn't learn it better? I was over there, and I don't pay attention because my pride say, no, stop, you're not going to do that for a living, but it's good to know. It's good to know, but believe me, that's good to know. And say, now my dad, all the time when I talk to him, you know, I say, oh, you know, this, this happened, and he always remind me, but you don't want to learn, okay? But you don't want to learn about it. Like, oh, that's okay. But yes, so if we take opportunity, well, I was talking to the, to the youth, your opportunity to know what your dad doing, it's okay to learn. it. Maybe you don't want to do that for a living, but it's good to know. Don't, do, don't commit my mistake, okay? When I, now a missionary, don't have money, and I need to fix my car, I was looking for, you know, who's going to fix my car, that kind of stuff. But yeah, if I knew when I was sitting there, okay, and the workshop and asking questions, I could ask that kind of question to my dad, but I didn't. So anyway, so that was my childhood or, or maybe teenager, you know, time. And then, uh, so what happened in the childhood of Jesus, okay? When he was 12, okay, we want to read over here. And Luke 2, 42 to 49 says, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. Okay, in that time... The celebration that they had is the Passover. The celebration they have the Passover. So they move, they, fl- they uh, drive. <laughs> they walk, okay, from uh, Galilee all the way to Jerusalem, okay? But because it's a common thing, they always do it in groups, okay? So I'm going to continue. 43. When they had finished the, the day, as they, as they returned, the boy Jesus injured behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it, okay? But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day, a day journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances, acquaintances, okay? 45. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to seek him. So that happened is because it was a big group and all going together, and there's family, okay, family and neighbors, and, you know, was, was a big group. So they're thinking, huh, maybe it's with, uh, with uh, some, of the na- some of the relatives. And then after a day, they realize, like, uh-oh, he doesn't appear. <laughs> okay, we need to go back and, and try to find him. 46. Now, now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple. Sitting in the midst of teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who were hear him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. I want to stop over there. So imagine, you know, what happened, okay? It's been a day. They, they, they start, you know, the, the, the going back to, to the house. And been a day, and then maybe in the night when they want to sleep, like, oh, where is Jesus? Okay, where is Jesus? So like, oops, we forgot about Jesus. So they went back, okay? And then when they're back, it was three days without finding. Imagine three days trying to find your son. I don't know, you have... But well, don't have kids, okay? We have kids. You get half hour or an hour when you're looking for your son and you don't know where he is, how you feel. That's, oh, one time um, we having a, um, a, a, a party in a, or a celebration, a celebration in Y1. And in Y1 we have a, a pool. In, in, in a, when we have, we have a pool, and we have celebration, but all the kids, you know, play together and things like that. So it's, we don't pay attention too much. You know, the kids playing. But suddenly, when we start, you know, kind of uh, uh, looking for uh, Josue, what's Josue? Yeah. I'm looking for Josue. I like, what is he? So, no, I don't know. Jose. So then, so then uh, a person who is in charge of the pool run 
you know, to the pool because say maybe he's in the pool. So was that really? So he ran over there. I was got really excited. Was like an hour, I think, looking for him. Kind of the whole uh, 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 um, people are looking for him, and then finally he found him, and he was in a house uh, uh, because in Y1 we have a uh, uh, houses, you know, on the on the on the you know closer. So he walked all the way to the house with another kid to play video game, and I was like, a, and what's an hour? Only an hour, but how you feel. So imagine, you know, Mary and Joseph, you know, three days looking for him. Three days look. Imagine how they feel or they felt. So then they go and say, what do you have done this to us? They say, your father and I have sought you anxiously. 49. And he said, he said to them, why do you seek me? Did did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. What happened at 12 years old, okay? In that time, uh, in the Jewish tradition, in that time, at 12 years old, okay, is when the, um, the father, uh, uh, the, okay, the Judaism, in that day, the boy began to learn about his father's trait, okay, when he was 12 years old. So Jesus doing this as he's 12 years old is when he said, I want to do what my father is going to do. And don't misunderstand, because he also learned about Joseph, okay? What that Joseph doing for a living, he was a carpenter, so he was a carpenter, so he do what does his early father do, but also he Understand that he need to what the heavenly father should do. So that's why at 12 is when the father's trait, you know, is being passed on, or, or it's when they start learning how to do what his fathers do. It was really common. Yeah, in that day, there was nothing more natural than the son taking up his father's business. Okay, so that's why Jesus did follow Joseph's footsteps as a comforter but also um, follow his heavenly fathers doing that day. So when Jesus said that to Mary and Joseph, say, you don't know that I need to be in my father's business? And they say, they don't understand. They didn't connect, okay, that, uh, that why he's talking to him. He's talking about the heavenly father, okay? So that's, that's what the connection, and that's why um, uh, Jesus do that. It was, it was fulfilled. What does, what does um, uh, the time or, or, or the tradition that it was in that time, okay? So that's, that's happening over there. Now, when we, if we're going to, to um, we come over here to the church, okay? And then we say, we're trying to do our Heavenly Father's, you know, job. Is, well, what, what is his job, okay? What is that thing that he normally uh, tell us, you know, to do, okay? Um, um, I want to see a few stuff, you know, Hebrews 10, 22, 25 say, let us hold firmly to the hope we claim to have. The God who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works. And let us not give up meeting together so some are in habit of doing this. Instead, let us encourage one another with words of hope. Let us do this even more as you see Christ's return approaching. So over here in Hebrews, he's talking about, you know, you at the church. You know, remember that I talked to you uh, when I talking to you about the, the book of Ephesians? Ephesians, yes. He said, we are part of the church. And I'm not talking about this congregation. I'm talking about the church, okay? Those ones who are trying to follow God, trying to follow, you know, let's say over here, fatherhood is a parenting with God, okay? How is the way that we parenting with him, okay? How is the way that we partnership, partnership, sorry, not parenting, partnership with him? How is the way that we partnership with him, okay? Where we come all together as a church and trying to look what does he want us from us, doing his will, 
Okay? Most of the time, we're kind of uh, thinking that the only way to do God's will okay, is uh, to be a, a pastor or a, a missionary or a, a worship leader or things like that. We're thinking it's the only way that doing um, uh, God's job, but it's not like that. We have uh, a gift okay, that God gave it to us, and it represents in the spheres of the society, okay, or in the areas of the society. I will, I don't know, you could see this, okay, but this is the, okay, I don't know, you could see it. No, okay, no. Anyway, I will, I will tell you about it, okay? So this is um, economy, okay, government, family, education, media, business, art, science, medical, church. Okay, so what, uh, what that's normally saying is like, uh, this is at the areas, maybe another one, but normally they say this one. This is one of the areas that is part of the, our society, okay? And these areas reflect God, okay? That's, that's why it's been divided that. It's all of them represent, okay, what does God want us to represent? So, example, you know, we have uh, the government, the government, what does God want to be represent is justice. Okay? But what happens when we talk about thinking about government? Okay? Sometimes we don't say, like, uh, maybe, maybe not. Okay? But this is uh, when God creates, okay, to be a, a government is, is more, you know, to represent his justice. Um, uh, business, okay? Uh, business. What is it? Okay, business, science, medical, okay? This one, it represents provision, order, and creation, okay? That's, that's what the God wants to be represent, okay? That's, of course, the enemy work in all these things, and he tried to twist it, okay? He tried to twist, okay? If the government don't represent justice for us, it's because it's being manipulated by uh, the, the devil or Satan to twist the stuff, okay? The same thing with the business. Sometimes we say business is more for provision, order and creation, uh, science and, and medical. But uh, what happened? Sometimes they come more for greed, okay? For all, oh, for money, okay? Instead of for provision, it's all more for money for me, more selfishness, okay? That is when the, the devil, you know, twists the stuff. Uh, family, we have family over here. Family represent love and caring, okay? Their family need to represent love and caring, okay? Of course, the devil twists the thing, you know, to don't represent that, okay? Um, uh, communication, the media, okay? The media, what is the, the, the God's character who need to be reflect? The truth, okay? The truth. And what does the media sometimes represent? If you see that the media don't represent that, it's because the devil twists it. Okay? Arts. Okay? Arts. What represent? The, the, the beauty. Okay? The, the, um, the joy. Okay? Sports. You know, the joy. is what should be represented. Education. Okay? We have education. Okay? Where are educa yeah, education? Okay? Education should be uh, represent. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, okay? And uh, church and religion, okay? Church or religion should be represent holiness and mercy. So when we see the areas of society and then what should be represent, it's telling us that when we uh, trying to do God's will, it's not only need to do it in one sphere, okay? In the church. <laughs> no. The church, okay, is part of it, okay? But you could do uh, father's um, a job in the way that you are, okay? What is the place that you are? Normally, for us, could be two or three areas that we are, okay? We, could, we are in the family area, so we need to reflect, you know, what character in the love and caring. We need to love and caring our family. Okay? If you're in a family, it's the thing that you should 
represent. God reflects that in their family. should be reflect. You have one area. You have another area because you're sitting here, so maybe you are church. Okay? And the church is the holiness and mercy. We need to be merciful for others. Not only tell you, like, oh, you need to be that standard, okay? You need to, oh, shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that, okay? That's, no, we need to have a mercy also. We need to have empathy with others. Okay, that's, that's, that's what we want to replace. And depend what you're doing for a living, okay? I don't know, you're in the education, you know, teacher, or in the business, okay? Or maybe the arts, okay, or the medical. So maybe you're having another thing. So you need to understand that in that area, you, the, the, the character of God that you do is provision, order, and creation. So we need not only to be there, um, like, a, oh, yeah, we should. No. We as a Christians, okay, we need to represent that. That's why the thing that you do, okay, and when you partner it with the Lord, you not only do it when, only when you came to the church. You do it when you're in your family, okay, at your house. You do it when you are in your job that you're doing. That's, that's something that needs to be reflect. And if not reflects, uh, the, the character of God, why not? Why not reflect the, the, the because, oh, because so-and-so do that to me, so I, so I want to be uh, uh, angry or things like that. No, no, no. We need to reflect God's friendship. If there are some problems over there, you need to forgive. Okay? You need to, everything to come to unity, okay, come from heaven. Everything that is unity. Everything that is separation come from the downstairs that is uh, the devil. Okay? So, so we need to understand that for us, a little, well, for me, it's kind of all together, you know, the thing that I do for a living is the kind of church, okay? I'm in, I'm, I'm in two and one, but I also family. So I want you to understand that you need to understand what is, where is where God put you with your, with your uh, um, talents, with your gift, to represent God in that area with others that you work with. Okay? So sometimes the people, I, when I grew up, I only think that the only way that follow God's will is to be missionary. It was my understanding. Because I don't want to be a pastor, is what I say. Okay? So I want to be a missionary because I was thinking I don't have too much of a, a, a patience with the people who are already Christian. Okay? In a missionary, you go one place, you share the gospel, they accept and say, see you, and then the next one. Okay, you go, share the gospel, they tell you, and then you go next one. As a pastor, it's not like that. Now you need to carry them. Okay? It's a slow and it's a process. Okay? So I was thinking, I don't have patience for that. <laughs> okay? That's why God worked with me 20 years <laughs> to get that patience. Because it's the same thing in our house. Okay? With our kids. You could say something to your kids, one, one thing. But then later he's like, do you understand? I told you. Yes, but you do differently. Okay? So that's, that's why in the beginning I would say, oh, you could be a pastor. I said, no, no, I don't want to be a pastor. I want to be a missionary. And I, don't, can, I, and I can be like a worship leader because I don't know how to sing. So, so I think that the only thing that I have is this one. But then later I realized, like, no, it could be everything that you want. Everything that God gives you gifts to do, then it's something that you want to apply. Then later I figure out that I have a pastoral heart. <laughs> like, oh, okay, well, thank you, you know, for letting me know. And then I have an opportunity to be around with you. And do you give me the opportunity to do what God created me to be? So that's, that when that happens, you say, wow, that's the click. And you have fun doing it. Of course, it's up and downs, and, and, not, and every job has their own, you know, good and bad. But most of the time, it's good. That's what I say. When you're in the time that you enjoyed it and God put you in that, oh, it's really good. Sometimes you think you're working. That's really like, huh, I'll come over here, you know, talk, pray. I like that. But of course, you know, when you have a situation that you know, other people have and you have a heart and you're crying, like, uh, you know, that this is part of the job. But I say that uh, you represent whatever you're doing, you should represent God in the father business. In all the areas of the society. Choose which one is your, we choose which one is your area and 
and, and see what does God need you to reflect. Because maybe that thing is not reflect in that area. And you could check it out. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. The Great Commission say, Go therefore and make disciples for all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I had commanded you. And, okay, no, there's no going, but okay, and I'm with you even to the end of the age, okay? So, this is the Great Commission, okay? They say, Go. And share about Jesus, about others. Oh, but that means that I need to leave my job and do to other places and do like that. No. Share Jesus to those ones who doesn't know in the place that you are. If you're in a place that doesn't reflect uh, God's character in that area, then what you need to do, talk to him, okay? Talk to the Lord when you pray. What is the thing, what the difference that I need to make here in order to God be represented in this area? Example, you know, the, the um, education, just education. And I understand that the government, you know, take control of the education. Okay, that happens when, when one area take control of another area, okay? Uh, most of the time, the government take control of the family or take control of the, go- uh, of the education, and they're not allowed to do what does God wants, you know, to do. They control They're not allowed to freely, you know, educate the kids and say, no, you, know, you want to do this and you want to do that. Okay, and when there's a mercy, and the government says, no, I want to be in charge of the mercy, okay? I want to charge, instead of the business do provision of that, I will do the provision. You give it that to me, and I do the provision. See this? When, when, when the areas are not in the right place, and one area take control of others, it's a mess. And we will see. Okay? Proverbs, another thing that we... Well, one of the things that we need to do when we are in, uh, in our um, uh, father's business, heavenly father's business, is Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And the one who is wise saves lives. Okay? When they say life, it doesn't mean that you want to be a, a lifesaver okay, in the pool. It's more about like a going over there and share the gospel. Sorry, share the gospel to those one who doesn't know about him. That's what it is. It's a soul winning. Be a soul win. How, how can we do it, you know, that way? This is my aunt, okay? This is the last time that I saw her. Um, uh, she, she, uh, she died a few months later, or weeks or months, you know, later. And I was over there. And uh, when my mom died, I was 15. And see, that time, my aunt they become my mom. She do like she was my mom since uh, 15 until she died maybe two, three, four years ago. Um, she was with me. She always talking to me, and I shared since I become a Christian. I shared with her, you know, about Christ. I said no, 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 no. And then uh, this is the last time that I saw her, and uh, and then I shared the gospel to her, and the last time that I have opportunity, and she accepted Jesus, and I was like a, Phew. well, thank you, the Lord. Okay, and then when she said Jesus, she was with me and said to me, we're okay. You don't need to come. And the meaning of her it says, you don't need to come back to Mexico, because I was living here, you need to come back to Mexico for my funeral. It was she saying that. I understand, I cry, and then I go, Poof, like a, okay, it's you know, difficult, you know, to do that. And my sister, I remember my sister when I arrived, say, share the gospel to her. Like, no, you share the gospel to her. You are also, it's also your mom kind of stuff, okay? My sister. Say, you better, you know, talking. <laughs> You're better talking. So I share, this is the last, and then Vanita take the photo just before I share that to her. And that was one of the things like, wow, because you know how hard it is. You know, sometimes I go to different places. And I, I share the gospel with people in the airplanes, in the greenhouse, okay, in the buses. I, I share in other places, and the people accept it, and I, okay, you accept it. But really, what I also wanted is my family accept this. Because we, we have something special with our family. But you know how hard it is to, to be witness with our families? 
It's really difficult. I try and try and try, and maybe in the end, you know, she accept. So that is something, when you do that, you're like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's worth it. Of course, you know, she passed away and it was a sad uh, situation, but, uh, but it's good that you could see, I will see her again. There's something that, ah, so we need to be like that. Share with others the same way that we want one of the people that we love accepted. Because sometimes um, God given us a different uh, uh, play or a different uh, uh, area of influence. Okay? We need to share with those ones that we have influence on them. Okay? Uh, I didn't have too much influence in my family. Okay? Because I said, well, you're an industrial engineer and you are a missionary, you know, giving your newsletter, you know, begging for money. That, that's what the people think about me in my family. Even though other people say, like, oh, look at this, you know, the, the teacher from Mexico come out here, you know, to, to teach us, kind of stuff. But this depends who those ones that God put you over there, that you're influenced to them. They need to share and reflect what is God, okay, to them. Ephesians 4, 12 says, to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. This is the thing that we should go to equip his people to work or service. We need to serve one another. Okay, we need to serve one another. It's the other thing that you need to be in the business, okay, in the heavenly father's business. Peter 2, 2, or first Peter 2, 2 say, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual meat, so that by you may grow up in your salvation. Most of the time, we're thinking like, a, well, I'm already Christian, okay? I already accept Jesus in my heart. I'm going to go to heaven. So, we're okay. They say, no, actually, being in the, in the father business, you need to grow. Imagine, this is Josiah, okay? And also, also is... Uh, um, Sico over there, okay? There was, I think, last year or the year before, you know, the BBS, and they do this kind of, um, I don't know, draw, okay? And they're over here, okay? And then they bring it to the house really proud, okay? They come and proud and, you know, show us what they did, and then we, ah, ah great job, woo, yeah, okay? Take a picture, you look at this, I take a picture to them. It wasn't... Her mom, at least this one, okay, <laughs> was me. I'm proud of him, what he's doing, okay? I'm proud of him. But imagine Caleb is in college. And he came with that draw. And go, look, Dad, you know what I did in college? And then, pfft. <laughs> do I do the same? I went, oh, thank you. Oh, yes. No. What was my expectation now? To grow. I, if that come to me, I go and say, oh, come on, you know, that's why I spend all that much money. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So it's the same thing when we do, the, when we are in the business of our father. In the beginning, yeah, we need that kind of attention. I, I shared with you before, you know, when I used to become a Christian, I have a cassette that I put all the time. And then uh, when I put the cassette, the music, you know, I sing the music, is uh, tal como soy, señor. Of course, not in the, uh, the microphone, okay? Just me in my room. And then I feel goosebumps. And I feel really well. And I feel like, oh, God, you are with me. Thank you. Then what happened later, next day, or two days later, I put the same song, okay, the same cassette. I feel goosebumps, and I feel, wow, you're with me. Thank you. And that happened months, another month, another month, until one day I put the cassette, and I don't feel anything. <laughs> okay, then I'll be worried, like, uh, am I seen? Am I uh, committing a mistake? Uh, okay, and then next day I put the cassette, and I'll be worried about the, why the cassette doesn't work anymore. Okay, what? God is not with me. Then later I realized that, say, Lucio, 
It's time to grow. You know, in the beginning, I was with you like that. Show you that I'm with you. Now you know that I'm with you. You don't need the cassette. You don't need the cassette anymore. You don't know to understand that I'm with you. Move on. Grow. That is the same thing that happened to us. Maybe we want to be in a position like, oh, you know, I like that when I uh, asked you and you did it right away. Ah, yes. So even if I don't do that thing that you asked me, I want you to understand that I'm with you, still with you. Learn and grow in your faith. Okay? Be in your father's business is also like that, is to grow. Because he needs you to grow. Because he wants you to teach the others how to grow. Do you know the last uh, link on the chain? You know the last link on the chain? You want to have receive and want to give. Think about that. Think about what you have to give. You have anyone working on that, praying for that. I... I've been, you know, searching, you know, the, we we'll have the, the, um, the celebration, okay, the 150 celebration. And, 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 and the thing that I want, is like you think, yes, we want to celebrate the 150. That's really good. But we also need to understand what it's going to be for this church the next 150 years too. What is our part in this? So when I say about what the fathers want us to do, it's like a, I've been, uh, um, you know, give, giving like a, a challenge, you know, to you. Invite one or one person or one family, you know, to, to be here. I don't say share the gospel, that they say Jesus. No, no, no. A person that you think they need God in their heart. Invite them to come. Invite them to come. Have a good excuse, you know, to celebrate, to eat, to be with us. But you don't have that one. Last week I, I shared about praying. Pray for that person. And today I say, uh, 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 gain, gaining souls is part of our job. It's a heavenly father job. So this is something that I want you to think about that. What is the repercussion to have? And I don't want you to, to, to invite the, like, a, um, oh, I need to buy. So, so invite those ones that you think they don't have a church yet. That those ones maybe come over here, that maybe go to another church, but then... Then after that, they don't go to any church, they don't in the house. Maybe you know them. Invite them over here. We're welcome, you know, for them. We have, I think we have a space over here. Okay? Even up there. So invite them, okay? Invite them. I don't say go all the way. Just first step. First step, talk to them. Invite them. You need to um, understand what is your role. Okay, in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the will of God in your life. And one of those things is just what you receive, also give. Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16 say, uh, 3.16-17 say, All scripture is good breathed, breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay? That's why we need to uh, uh, grow in the Lord. Also uh, uh, share with others. Okay? So this is the three points that I put you over here on the back. You could give it you know, to you. And uh, it's uh, um, be in the Father's house is, will be part of the church. Not only this um, uh, place, okay? Not only this, uh, but also in the church, okay? You're part of the church. You are so much bigger than just this uh, congregation, okay? It's part of the church. Uh, share with the lost, okay? Win soul for Christ. And build up and train fellow believers in the word and through and prayer time, okay? So it's the three things that Working in the Father's business is, okay? Let's pray. Father, I want to say thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, being able to, to be in your business, okay? 
So even if you are in, if we are in your business, well, tell us what to do. We're already in, okay? We're trying to do your will. So help us to do. Help us to, to show us the next step. What is the next step? Okay, sometimes we don't want, you know, to, to share with others because we're thinking, oh, no, or not, it's not me, or no, it's not my, my uh, uh, gift. But you put in us, you know, to talk to others, to share about you with others. So in the way that they could do it, Father, you know, guide them. You know all of them. They're your son and daughters. So please help us to understand what is the next step, what is what you want in their life. Bless this church, bless this congregation, and help us to do your will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so please send up those one who can. Want to do the benediction? Okay, the, may the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen.